A FAM production. Furniture and mattress. FAM.news. You know, sustainability in mattresses is so often focused on what's in a mattress, but what about how it's made? It all connects to labor, to automation, and the future of mattress making. Paul Block and David Eadson from Legged and Flat are here. The Dos Marco Show begins right now. Welcome to the Dos Marco Show with Mark Kinsley and Mark Quinn, where mattress and furniture leaders gather to grow, get the inside scoop, tell stories, and take tequila shots. Uno, dos, tequila! Welcome aboard. Here's your passport to a planet filled with the mattress industry's brightest minds and biggest ideas. The galaxy's greatest mattress podcast has liftoff in three, two, one. Hey, Mr. Kinsley, how you doing? Hey, by the way, I want you to know, I woke up after riding mountain bikes with you and my butt hurt so bad I could barely sit in a chair. Just say it. Hey, I even gave you some pillow pants. Totally clean, by the way, but I gave you pillow pants. My, my wife calls them that. It's I'm, actually a chamois. I always yeah. remind her. And I'm, it still I'm, didn't work for you, huh? No, I'm wearing them now. I've, 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 I find that they're very comfortable with a bony butt. You just wear them all the time. It seems to be great. You know, Kinsley, we're, we're very lucky today because we both are graduates from Leggett and Platt until they ran us out. Um, HR is a huge misunderstanding, but anyway, they Leggett just ran us the hell out of there. Um, no, the, the guys from Leggett are awesome, and we know both of these guys, Paul and David, from our time there. So the fact that we get to do a show with them is awesome. So Paul Block, you know Paul's story. He's not just an amazing business guy that knows a lot about uh, machines and equipment. His family's been in the industry for a long time, and he's now with like a, and he's also a fantastic musician. I had the chance to play with Paul and the Insomniacs, an industry rock band, and they pulled me up there uh, up on stage, and I got to blow my harp with them. And Paul's a, a, an incredible keyboard player. Did you know that? You've seen him play, right? Oh, I've seen him play. I got I, Paul. I saw you at an industry event. You hop up and tickle the ivories and sing a song. And even though they had hired a musician, they're like, we need to get the real musician in the room up here. You just absolutely crushed it. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you, guys. It couldn't be kinder. Couldn't be kinder. And Mark's a killer harp player. He, he won't play it up. But well, he's, don't, he's don't build up a guy's ego that's got a, 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 an enhanced <laughs> rear end at the moment from his pillow pants, hey, okay? I, he's already getting enough compliments, I'm sure. This, this is me. I think that's going to be a fashion statement. Well, the puff pants make it look like you have a, a, a behind, so that's good. I'm just going to wear them now. It's nice. David, do you play any musical instruments like tambourine, like a, a kazoo, anything? Uh, no, no music, no musical talent at all. So you're just a super no. talented engineer that makes world class machinery. As a matter of fact, I think the last time I saw you guys, you're like, "Come over here, check this out," and it was around that XT9 machine that you guys rolled out at ISPA and we were gathered around and then we high-fived and hugged and said hello and I got to see the machine run and then we broke and I haven't seen you guys since so it's nice yeah. that we get to be back back together so is this your was this your one of your babies David the the XT9 or how, how did this all come about well I mean we actually launched it in 19 at Interzoom and you know then it was the plan was to bring it to the domestic market and the world kind of shut down for a couple of years. So this was the first launch domestically for that machine. So, yes. Gotcha, gotcha. That's super cool. Well, we wanted to talk to you guys today about some trends in the labor market. Talk about automation. Talk about machinery. Talk about how it's changing the way mattresses are made. And also aligning with what consumers expect whenever they end up buying a mattress these days. So, Let's let's jump in. I mean, what trends are you seeing? Let's start with you, Paul, in the cons or in the labor market, in the automation space, and how those things all connect. Well, the labor market, as we all know, is one of uh, every business's biggest nightmare right now. Uh, just getting uh, any labor, let alone skilled labor, is very very difficult. So for us, uh, our our customers' challenge is to uh, de-skill that labor and uh, eliminate labor in uh, any heavy lifting, uh, any 
uh, normal processes that we can replace with a, a robot or a mechanism that eliminates those uh, those particular jobs or allows somebody to do a different job. Uh, it's just hard to find people that uh, show up for work these days. So we're trying to find uh, ways to help our customers. Every customer is a little bit different. Every problem is a little bit different, but we have solutions for everything. Uh, I wouldn't say everything, but uh, a tremendous amount of what's in the mattress industry. I hear this from a lot of people right now, too. I mean, we experience the same situation. What What's your best guess here, guys? Because sometimes I'll talk to people about supply chain and labor issues. And at this point, folks are looking at each other going, well, well what are people doing? Where are they at? What, why are they not working? What's your best guess at this? David, I'll let you answer that. What do you think? What I think, I mean, is it's real competitive, you know, making a bed mattresses and it's hard labor. You know, it's a manual type function where, you know, you can go to other industries, restaurants, and they're paying top dollar now for people because they can't find skilled labor either. But, you know, you'd rather flip hamburgers than flip mattresses. It's a lot easier work at the end of the day. So, I mean, that's kind of they're lighter. They're lighter, and, and uh, but but mattresses have fewer calories, in fairness to mattresses. <laughs> that's true. But one of the things that we do is try and eliminate that weight from being a part of the problem, trying to create a circumstance for an operator to thrive and not have to do all that heavy lifting. So that's part of what Okay, we're let's doing. go there for a minute. Let's dig in a little bit and get granular. So a world-class operation, let's say in the U.S. today, that's using automation and maximizing automation, what does that flow look like from the time the raw materials come in until the mattress gets spit out the other side? What does world-class look like when you, let's say, de-skill that, take a, as many human touch points out as possible? Paint that picture for us. That's David's expertise. Go ahead, David. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big question. So, cause it's, that is a big question. That is a big question because it's going to kind of, depend on the type of mattress being assembled. You know, we're on a complete foam core mattress. It's all done with, you know, lamination and then building up your layers from there. Where if you're doing a hybrid type, you know, you've got the units coming out either from a crate being compressed, they have to, there's really no automation to open those. The row, if they're road type units, yeah, we can dispense them with our roll opener system and feed them down through the conveyor and then they're pulling them off and doing the assembly work there. So it, it's, you know, eliminating the touch points, the foam type mattresses are a lot easier to automate because it's everything's just flowing through. We have devices for doing the layer of the comfort layers on top of your core. And then from there, it would go to like getting FR socked if that's required. And then the zipper cover is put onto it, zip closed and rolled packed and out the door it goes. And so just in that, I know it depends on a lot of different variables, but just in, in kind of the averages you see, how many people would typically uh, touch that mattress in that more highly automated process? The one that we're working on to present at Interzoom one person running the line. The entire line? Yes. Versus what might be the averages today at a typical factory? How many people? 10. One, to, okay. Wow. 10 down to one. Okay, this I have to see. This I have to see. So, okay, let's, let's dig into like something that I did see, which was that XT9 machine. Describe this and, and help us understand, is there a, a de-skilling that happened with the XT9? Do you take labor out of the process in some way? But first, uh, Paul, why don't we go to you? Tell us what the machine does and why it matters. So what we're doing is we're putting together comfort layers. We're stacking comfort layers and putting them together. We're joining them. Uh, we're currently, uh, most manufacturers use glue in between each layer, uh, and they have to handle each layer, put glue on, Put them together and continue on through that process as they build it up. Uh, what we're doing is taking thread and we're using a, a sewing piece of equipment that will uh, 
join those layers together with thread without compressing it. So if you can take a, a four inch maximum uh, layup of foam and put the thread through it without compressing it so it maintains its natural height. So uh, the great advantage, there's many advantages in that. Uh, some are from a sustainability point, some are from an airflow point. I think more, more important than anything is the airflow. One of the things that, uh, are, that mattress uh, designers put a lot of time into is creating the perfect uh, comfort layers that go together, that create the perfect comfort experience for the end user. What they do then is they put these layers of glue in between each layer, which uh, it reduces the amount of comfort that you're going to have in the bed. So what we're able to do is join those together with thread and therefore keeping uh, the airflow, the original design of the bed, the way those layers are supposed to work together and feel together is preserved and it gives it, uh, our customers a better uh, bed and better and, and, and Paul, to talk about the airflow, just so everyone understands, <clears throat> this machine, so number one, I was shocked. I, I didn't realize it was four inches. That's pretty thick, right? So that's a lot of ability to quilt or attach layers together, right? Um, but it 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 it, it, right. it it hits it like every how many inches, so it gives you a it gives you a, a tag like that long, right? And then it, and then it hits it again in how many more inches? Well, we start out with a condensed stitch at the start of the product. Right. They're about one inch in length, and then we transition to a three inch long stitch. And then once we reach the trailing edge, it transitions back to. A one inch stitch. But how how long in between three inch stitches? You hit it with three inches and then you hit it again. How how much further along? How how three, far apart are the the three inch? Nine inch. Nine, nine inches inch, in, nine between. Inch in between. So so my point though is for our audience inch. because if you have a nine inch, you know a three inch uh, tag and then you wait for nine inches and then you hit it again, then that space in between. Um, can air can flow through there, right? And so it billows up a little bit. It still holds it in place for good quality, but air can flow through that versus if you have two layers of foam stacked right on top of each other, no air gets through there. Am I, am I capturing that right? Yeah, I mean, on, on glue, you're going to have a barrier. It's going to be the whole width and, and length of the whole foam piece. Uh, with thread, even where we stitch in between each stitch, three inches, you have all that flow as well. So it's not only continuous flow through each nine inches, but it's side to side in between each three inches as well. So plenty of airflow in there uh, it makes a big difference in the mattress. It's, it, it's interesting too, to think about, um, I've looked at a lot of factories just from a standpoint of what are the steps, where are the bottlenecks? And I tell you, bottlenecks at glue stations are real issues for a lot of manufacturers, whether that's creating a foam tub that you have to drop an inner spring unit down inside, or, you know, putting a pattern of glue over a piece of foam and layering it up. Uh, so, so this, I would, I would imagine it saves in labor. And, and like you said, it kind of de-skills some of that. Uh, d does that capture it accurately? And it's a clean process. Say again? A cleaner process. It's so much easier to, to work with. Glue is messy. I mean, it's, it's going to stick and it's going to get all over the place and you're going to have to keep it clean and you're going to have to clean the machine and make, maintain the machine a lot, uh, a lot of power to run it. Uh, it's it's a, uh, a tough process. There's also, if you're going to ask any... Sorry, well, there's also a, a rework savings because if, you know, unfortunately, if the operators build up the wrong pieces with the glue then you're trashing that whole piece. Where with the XT9 product, all you have to do is pop the threads and unravel it, rebuild it the correct way, run it back through the machine. So the reworking you know, eliminates that and scrap materials and everything for the manufacturers. Wow, yeah, you think about how many times that happens. You know, I've <laughs> some of the factories, they literally, put different colors across the very end of those pieces of foam. And it's like, I need a, 
a, a green or I need a, an orange. Right. And sometimes the you know, foams discolor and they put the wrong one on there. And all of a sudden you've built the wrong bed and you have to trash the, both of those layers of foam if you can't peel them apart. So you're saying the right. XT9, it's just thread. Boom, you go and you cut it, you flip it, you do it, you know, bring in the right piece and you're off to the races and you didn't have any waste. As an industry, there's there's a mandate, I think we're under in a, in a sense, to introduce more sustainable practices, not only from keeping mattresses out of landfills, but think about what's happening in that manufacturing environment that we're solving for here. Right, that's what I was going to say. It makes it a lot easier to recycle because currently you have to separate the layers, you know, from the foam layers to the spring unit to the the covers, the fabric and everything. They're wanting that separated. And at least with the stitching, well, with the stitching, like I said earlier, you can pop the threads and separate all the layers and they're not contaminated with adhesives or anything. So I want to get to the glue in a second, guys. But one of the things that like really like impressed me too is I think quality control is a huge deal for factories, right? So number one, we talked about the labor. So you don't have guys spraying everything with glue. So that's one thing. This thing goes through an automated process, right? So it's easier there. But also with an automated process, you really can control quality differently, right? So I know many, many times I've been in bedding factories and a lot of times there is a problem with the glue or the glue hasn't set or the glue didn't, you know, cure to the foam and it just causes all kinds of trouble. And so this can really eliminate that problem, right? Yes. And it's a process that they know. Right. It's, it's basically a, a quilting machine in, in essence as far as the way it works. So it's something they're familiar with, something they deal with every day. Uh, there's no surprises here. And it's very simple. To and I can't tell you how many times I've seen is, beds get spit out of a you know roll pack machine. And under that compression, if the glue wasn't dried, then you have a product that you can't sell. Um, I've seen layers just completely right. stuck together and it deforms the mattress. So if you take glue out of the equation, all of a sudden you got a product that you don't even have to have worry. I mean, you probably actually speed up your throughput because you don't have to wait on anything to dry. Um, have you, uh, and does this roll pack say. okay? Yes. Yeah, we've done the li the rollator's life cycle test on it, Cornell testing, and it all passes. The The stitching and everything holds up. So, you know, what we've seen is maybe some the threads cut a little groove in the phones, but the stitching will not break, so... And you can still roll yeah, pack, the, so that's good for anyone doing that, the, right? So, so let's right, talk about glue for a second. Say. Well, I was going to say no, the ahead. same thing, Mark. Well, the same thing he was talking about there is, you know, especially if they're hand spraying and the operator, you know, he's spraying and looking around. They're having to set those products maybe six to eight hours to let them cure before they can roll pack them for what you were saying there. Because if they try to do them wet, it's either going to, push the moisture out into the fabric and stain it, or you're going to get a ramen noodle out of the mattress when you open it. So don't want that. Um, so the no. glue is a problem, not just for that, but let's talk about glue in terms of sustainability. Like when you go to recycle a bed, number one, if you get all that glue, it gums up things, right? So in like, like recycling machines, if I'm not mistaken, and and glue in a bed is not environmentally friendly. Am I right? I would agree on that. You know, it's because it's a chemical base. Uh, I don't hear it as often, but it used to be here once the consumer got the roll bed home, there was an odor off of it. And don't, you know, that tied to the glue and everything. So and just in terms of, you know, integrity of feel, you know, like we talked about earlier, <laughs> if you ever build up a mattress. Yes, I can't hear you. If you ever build up a mattress, you can actually, uh, you know, put a piece of butcher paper in there, like a really thin one, and you know you're going to feel the difference of that. So you can put very, very thin layers in between pieces of foam or springs and foam, and you can feel that change. So you can only imagine that if you're putting an adhesive over the top of it, that adhesive is going to, you know, fundamentally alter that feel to some degree, especially when it's layer upon layer upon layer. Hey, tell us the origin story of this, David. I, I like that, you know, I always noticed this when I was at Leggett. Leggett is not afraid to look at what has been done and then revisit that. And it's really cool that you took a machine, which is, you know, effectively a quilter, which Leggett and GSG has been making for a long period of time. And you've adapted this over to, you know, create a product or create a process that's more sustainable, 
that you know maintains the you know the fuel integrity and has all those other benefits that we talked about was this an initiative that you know found its way into gsg through customer demand or was it an internal project what's the origin story here of the xt9 uh, and I, I keep going back to that one because it's the one i saw yeah. and the one that we you know or kind it of was an internal here. project. I mean, we actually started out with a just a two needle machine, basically set up at nine inches apart. Um, and really, the first samples we made up to start testing, uh, we hand stitched them together just to see if the look because we didn't know if we could because you know with all the multi needle quilters that GSG does, we're compressing you know this much material. To this to get it stitched. So the goal with this one is to take that much and not compress it. So, you know, we had to look at how much needle travel we was going to have to get through the material without compressing and be able to form the stitch when we came back up. But it was in development uh, three years before we introduced the machine to the market. So, what kind of placements are you getting with it now? Are you are you getting customer feedback at this point? What are you hearing? We got a lot of interest at ISPA. I mean, we're doing follow up. You know, I think it's such a, a drastic change from the way everybody's traditionally made mattresses. You know, you glue it together and ship it out. And it's it's. I think it's just trying to get that convinced. This is a better method, and that's one reason we wanted to get on your guys' show to you know get the word more out there and keep promoting it. Yep. Well, I mean, well, hey, it doesn't hurt that, that you showed it to us at ISPA and, and we're like, yes, that we need that in our industry. This needs to be more of a manufacturing process. And look, David, just what you said is such an important point. I remember back when we were, you know, talking about quantum edge and, you know, that was a fundamental shift in the manufacturing process. They were having these huge bottlenecks at the glue stations to build those foam tubs and quantum edge took the, those perimeter coils all the way to the edge. Uh, but it, it's like, wait a minute, this is a change. Change is hard. Change is sometimes an investment. Change uh, is training. You know, it's internal buy-in. It's all those different things. But gosh, whenever something comes along that's a no-brainer like that and like like this, and, you know, I think it's time to take a hard look at it and figure out, you know, how can I, like we talked about, solve some of these labor issues? You know, we, we've right. got to focus on that. How do we take human touch points out of it? And then how do we really be able to tell a sustainability story that's truthful. And I, I think that's, these are all trends that we need to find machines and products and materials to support. You, you know, Mark, I think that's a great point because it's not just making a bed with natural materials. It's the process that you make a bed with. You know, TSI, Timberbedic is doing a lot around solar and they've committed to building one of their factories, an example, like we're all charged, uh, you know, big corporate investors, boards of directors, so focused these days on companies that have sustainable stories. So it's really relevant to everybody, not just someone who values it. Paul, you've had a lot of conversations with customers about, uh, about the XT9. And so tell like, what, what's resonating with people about it, right? There's so many different like benefits from it. You've got the airflow, you've got a consistent quality, um, uh, the ability to just really maintain a consistent quality, lack of glue, that's good for the environment. Um, you've got so many stories to tell here. Like what, what's really uh, landing with the, the bedding producers that you're talking to? Talk about airflow right off the bat. That really gets people interested. And uh, that, that, for me, has really uh, brought people in and, and wanted them, and they wanted to look at the product and, and take it seriously just looking at that. Um, however, once you start getting into it, and then you, you bring up the glue story and you start talking to people about what it does in their factory and how they have to deal with it now, and they have a way to get out of that, uh, it's, it's very attractive to them to hear that that it's possible. And then you start exploring the savings. Uh, there's a big savings story here as well. I mean, we're not even using that as a lead, but it's... it's well, a, how do you get to the happens. savings though, Paul? How do you do the math on that? When you're, if you price out what, and everybody's number is different, okay? And everybody's factory, what they're used, what their cost is per layer. Everybody has a cost per layer. 
you take that cost per layer and, and let's make up a number. Let's say it's two dollars or fifty cents a layer. Uh, if you compare that to thread, uh, thread is going to cost you maybe twenty cents. I mean, kind of stretching it over the whole mattress. It's all the layers. So the cost savings is dramatic when you start looking at that part of it. And then you start adding in all the extra, uh, just the maintenance labor is going to make sense as far as that's concerned. Uh, on top of being able to run all three layers through or four layers, whatever it's going to be, through the machine in one shot, all those things are very, very helpful. Make a lot of sense to the customer. You know, Kinsley, that's a good point because normally when you make a bed, right, you take one layer, spray it, put on a second layer, spray it, put on the third, right? That's what you have to do. Spray and, it. And spray it and spray it. And then that's four layers, spray it four times. With this, so you just throw it through the machine, it tags it, and you're done. And and it's consistent and it's got airflow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You got to stack them, get it, get it straight. Put it in the machine. And then all of a done. sudden, you know, after 20 of those, a short cycle yeah, the new, 35 seconds. the new guy comes in and he, you know, screws it up four layers. Boom. Now you just cut it, cut it, send it back through, get it right. I love that. Right. I love that piece of it. Just so you, you can eliminate waste. It's, it's also good for the sustainability portion of it as well, because the different materials that you're going to use in your, in your stack up. If you're able to separate them and then uh, use them, repurpose them for the next stage, uh, it's a better sustainability savings and uh, more impact. So, uh, and also you don't mix in the glue in it. You have fresh materials that you're using for whatever that next. And Paul, that's a big conversation in the industry right now. How can we build mattresses that are ready to deconstruct for recycling for that end of life? Um, and one of the key things, it's you got to be able to uh, get those parts separated as simply as possible so that you can put them into the different channels they need to go into so that individual material can be recycled in that individual way and then repurposed and upcycled into some future product. So we, we do have to, I think we're charged with this imperative of being sure that we're building with deconstruction in mind while also you know, honoring our commitment to build quality products. And I think you've checked both the boxes on that. And it was a really cool product to see work in person. I'm like, wait a minute, is this a quilter? No, this is foam going through, like spitting foam through. And then I, I was tugging on it and, you know, it, it all worked and it all held nice and tightly. And then you guys, you know, started digging into that. I'm like, this is a story that we need to tell in the industry because it's a great living example of focusing on sustainability, solving real manufacturing problems, introducing cost savings, and then addressing some of these trends like we talked about with the labor market being tight. So kudos to Legan and Platt and you know, GSG, Paul, you and David. How can, hey guys, how can people see the XT9, learn more about GSG? Where can they go? If they go to gsgcompanies.com, uh, the XT9 is on there, as well as a bunch of our other products. And uh, they can reach out to David or myself. And uh, we'd love to walk them through it and hear what their story is and see if there's a match and if it makes sense for them to explore the product. So everybody, you say you have a, you have a contact form up on gsgcompanies.com that they can use that contact form. Yes, absolutely. Or, uh, paul.block at legit.com and David. And as Leggett. always, we'll, we'll be happy to stick handle it for you. If anybody reaches out through the fam, we'll make sure you get in, in touch with these two fine gentlemen and, and, just if they're also interested, Paul, is there any YouTube video of you playing out there that people can find? There is a GSG. Uh, if you look under GSG on YouTube, you'll find some videos. Ah. Of me, of me playing? I'm sorry. I got that yeah. wrong. Yeah. Like, why does playing? GFG have videos of you playing the like, piano? Come on. I'm glad they support you. Well, I, was, uh, I, didn't, I didn't even say playing. Uh, you, could, you could maybe... Uh, if you want to friend me on Facebook, you'll see some videos there. I think that's hey, the I, I want to just say there is some stuff. There is some stuff on YouTube, but you, you know you need uh, some private links. I know how it is. I know how it is. I, I just want to say to you guys, like I, you know, Leggett doesn't get enough credit in my opinion. Kinsley and I are kind of homers because we work there, and and we understand the thought process and. Uh, in what it takes, uh, David, I think you said you had the idea two or three years before it came to market. Like, 
like you guys blow me away the the innovation you bring to the industry the way you think about things it's different uh, you guys are driving stuff into the market um, clear solutions for betting producers out there we're pushing towards sustainability this is a great option for people and uh, just hats off to you guys for doing some really cool stuff and 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 staying ahead of it and bringing innovation into this category we need it we're grateful to you. We're grateful to GSG and Leggett. And everybody, it doesn't hurt to call these guys and uh, ask a question or understand it better. Uh, you got to see it for yourself. It's really cool. But David and Paul, you're you're awesome. Thanks so much for spending time with us. And uh, will you come back sometime and share some more innovation? Absolutely. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate you hosting us. Thank you. You can bounce on it. Oh, oh. What is a hybrid? It's like peanut butter jelly, peanut butter chocolate. Hybrid so tight, there's no way that you could topple it. Hybrid on my wrist, that's a calculator watch. We add ourselves together and we take it up a notch. Got the airflow, yo, keep you cool as it get. Visco foam alone to make you drip sweat. Get a hybrid mattress, yes, you'll get better rest. Cool and comfortable, I'm hybrid like a sweater vest. Oh. You know the game, we're ahead of the sun. Cause the two of us together are way better than one. Cause I'm cool. Is ice. And I'm hot like a heater Bounce by the ounce Now, now we, we got, got it by the leader Well you take a spring And you wrap it up right You can sleep so smooth Or bounce all night yeah. Put two together Get a whole lot more Get the feel of the comfort core You can bounce on it oh. Lay back You don't have to practice It's the best thing to happen To your mattress yeah. Get together to do it like I did Everybody get hybrid if you want somebody to get in your vicinity, you probably want to feel a little bit of a hybridity. Foam alone, out of five, maybe one star. Springs and foam, we're taking care of that lumbar. Mad back support, the best way to shack up or just get rest that won't mess your back up. Like a hot chick mixed with a particle physicist or a mullet. Party in the back of the business. Best of both worlds like Mars and Venus. The ultimate hybrid. Nothing short of cheap. Keeping it loose while keeping it tight We can make you sleep or play all night Put two together, get a whole lot more Get the feel of a comfort core You can bounce on it No stopping when the beat gets played back Springs keep it popping, foam keeps it laid back Party over here, get invited Everybody get hybrid it doesn't matter if your kitchen is charming when your bedroom's the most important part of the apartment. What kind of bed do you keep back there? Does your girl want to chill on a beanbag chair? Hell no. You need springs and foam. Because if that bowling ball don't bounce, you'll be sleeping alone. And if the bed don't react, then you can't get low. We, we got, got that type of bounce, bounce that won't spill your Merlot. So stick with us and you'll get rewarded. Because I'm so gentle. And I'm so supportive. Hybrid is where the magic is. And we just killed a song about mattresses. Oh!